So some of the issues uh, raised, in fact, very topical. China has been conducting military drills around Taiwan just days after the new pro-independence president was inaugurated. I know, and, uh, you are, and you and other members of the US military say you're not too concerned about it, but is the ongoing concern with all of these drills and testing of navigational waters and the like, uh, the, the risk of miscalculation, the risk of error, and, and all of a sudden the region goes up in flames? Yeah, Michael, that, it's a great question. And I'll tell you, it's not so much that we're not concerned about it. It's not a surprise that, that the, the POA have decided to um, ramp up operations after in, in the post-President uh, pre, uh, President Lai inauguration. But um, the, the concerns you laid out are absolutely on target because you know, there's always, whenever you have a significant amount of increased activity in any, in, in relatively confined spaces, you run the risk of miscalculation and uh, you could end up getting in, into a situation where an unintentional action can spiral out of, you know, into a much more serious situation. President Xi, as we all know, says he wants his country to be prepared to invade Taiwan by 2027. Do we take him at his word? Well, I'm in the military. Uh, you're, you, I think you would expect me to take him at his word. And so how, how does the US military, the Australian military, prepare for that pretty horrifying inevitability if it does happen? It absolutely is. I think the best way we prepare is to uh, conduct or, or pull together our forces as a, de as a deterrent. That's the ultimate objective here, is to deter any potential conflict, not just in the, in the Taiwan Straits, South China Sea, East China Sea, anywhere. Nobody wants any conflict in this region. So we do have uh, a, a, a great relationship militarily uh, between Australia and the US. We have Australian submariners increasingly going to be on board US submarines. And I know this came up as an issue in the press club speech. Uh, worst case, there is a conflict uh, between America and Taiwan. Wh where does that leave the Australian Defence Force members, possibly on the time in, in US submarines, on US warships? Wherever? Uh, yeah, and I, look, that's a fair question. Because when, uh, when Australians are on US uh, platforms, they're essentially filling US billets and they're, and they're, um, uh, they're exchange officers. But in the end, when you're talking about conflict, those are national sovereign decisions. So there is, it, it, at least in my mind, there's no, there's no expectation that there's an automatic assumption that Australia is going to be involved in any conflict. That's up to your government to decide that. Do you see a situation of tensions ever de-escalating between China and other countries in the region? Uh, or are we heading on, on one path only? No, I don't think we're heading on one path only at all. There's, you know, the, the nice thing about uh, geopolitics is that it, it, it is a give and take. And I, I, you know, I believe that in the end, I have faith that, that uh, President Xi and the CCP are going to understand that it is better to be part of and collaborative with the international community rather than, than being, uh, creating points of friction with it. Uh, AUKUS, a uh, very big deal between Australia, the US and the UK. Uh, a lot of concern about whether uh, nuclear submarines will arrive in Australia on time. Do, do Australians have cause for concern about U.S. shipyards meeting their side of the deal uh, as part of this agreement. I don't. I don't think so. At least, at least not yet. I mean, there's 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 always the chance that, that there will be delays. But there's there is a, a strong, really strong commitment across our our, our our government to ensure that AUKUS is realized. General Sklenka, I really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much.